Okay, welcome back. So, if you recall in the last class, we had sort of wrapped up the PN junction uh, details, you know. We had studied about the diode current, the ideal current of the diode equation and also the generation recombination current that becomes important sometimes. Uh, we also discussed about how band gaps and other things play a role, the minority carrier concentration and so on. We understand that there are drift and diffusion currents in a PN junction when you apply bias. The depletion width, the built in potential also change when you apply bias. All these things we had discussed. I also told you that many of the devices like LEDs, BJTs, photo detectors and solar cells, they are all based on PN junction. So, you know, I would say that we will pause for some time in this lecture and we will try to look back uh, it, with respect to the basics of PN junction that we have learned, how we can analyze or at least understand some of the devices in very brief, okay. Uh, of course, there will be more discussions on all these devices in a later part of the course, but today we shall just, uh, you know, look at the simple PN junction recalling from the last lecture and see how it can enable different kinds of devices, just the basic principles, okay. So, we will come to the whiteboard here. Uh, and I will start with the PN junction band diagram again. So, if you recall a PN junction in equilibrium, you know has its own depletion length, depletion width you can say W and as I told you that if you apply forward or reverse bias, the depletion width can either increase or decrease. The built in potential that you have here, the voltage that you have actually dropping here, the built in potential can also increase or decrease depending on whether you are applying a forward or reverse bias, right. And if you recall, you know the IV characteristics of this PN junction that is the current voltage characteristics um, look something like that in this is the applied voltage in the forward bias in the positive direction it will stay like this very low and then it will increase we call this the cutoff. In the reverse bias side it is very small current eventually it breaks down right. So, that is why it is a rectifier because it allows current to flow in one direction and does not allow current to flow in the other direction right that is why it is called a rectifier. Now, I had briefly mentioned that how this can be used as an LED which means how can you emit light from this. Please recall that to emit light your semiconductor needs to be a direct band gap semiconductor which again we have discussed many times. So, we will not uh, come to that again. For example, silicon is not a direct band gap semiconductor, germanium is not a direct band gap semiconductor. So, they cannot emit light ok. Uh, and I told you that if this is the band gap of the semiconductor E g then the wavelength of light that you can emit is lambda h c by e g ok in nanometer you can write. So, that is the wavelength of the light that will be emitted and an LED for uh, a PN junction can behave as an LED, a PN junction actually can behave as an LED when you forward bias it, when you forward bias it which means when you apply a forward bias this is the regime, this is the forward bias regime right on the positive side of the, the x axis here on the y axis here. So, when you apply forward bias uh, which means you are injecting electrons from this side to that side, you are injecting holes from this side to that side. In such a case if it is a direct band gap semiconductor it could emit light. So, what will happen is that when the electrons move here and the holes are moving here there is a probability that they might recombine band to band an electron and a hole here could recombine band to band that is called radiative recombination. So, that that will emit light. If there are trap states here which recombine with the, the trap states help in the recombination of electrons and holes that are non radiative do not emit light. So, light could come out from here, but of course, this is not an efficient LED firstly because number one the problem the, the problem number one with this kind of a simple PN junction is that the electrons and holes might move too fast here may not get enough time to recombine because there is a time to recombine no. And secondly the of course, and that associated with that is that electrons and holes have a diffusion length if you recall L n and L p. Uh, if L n is for example, 100 micron it means every 100 micron one electron and one hole will recombine. So, if then this depletion width is typically in the range of few hundred nanometer or a micron. So, if every 100 micron which means it is a very large distance one electron and one hole recombine that means one photon will come out that is not I mean that there is no light from there right. You need a large number of electrons and holes to combine like 10 to the power 15, 10 to the power 16 it is not going to happen in this. So, you know this is a limitation of the diffusion length problem. So, you want the electrons and holes to sort of be confined in this area. So, st stay more time there so that they can get more time to recombine and emit light. So, how you do that we shall discuss when we actually come up with LED chapter you know with heterojunctions and compound semiconductor. But in general it is possible that electrons and holes that are crossing here in a direct band gap semiconductor would be able to recombine radiatively and emit some light. Another problem this is not a good LED is that when the light is emitted from here you see the band gap of this side and a P side or n side is the same as band gap of this region where you are actually emitting light. So, this region will be essentially absorbing the photons. So, what I mean is that 
because they are the same band gap no. So, what I mean is that if I take you know a structure like this. So, for example, I have a p type layer and then I have an n type layer in between I have a depletion layer in between I have a depletion layer this is the depletion layer, but the band gap is everywhere same. So, when when electrons and holes recombine in the depletion region here you know they emit light the emit light emitted light cannot come out here I mean they will all get absorbed here actually this area has the same band gap as this area. So, the wavelength of light that is emitted will be actually corresponding to the band gap here also right. So, then this will absorb the photon this will also absorb the photon top down. So, the photons will get absorbed and will very small fraction could come out of course, it can come out to the side, but that is a very tiny you know fraction that might come out here. So, essentially it will not be an efficient LED because this will absorb it out ok. So, the solution of course, you know is to have this region and this region of slightly wider band gap than this region because if your band gap of this you know depletion region suppose this region depletion region has a band gap of say 2 electron volt the photon that is emitted will be absorbed here if the p and n region are also 2 electron volt. But if I make the p region 2.2 electron volt for example, and n region 2.2 electron volt slightly larger then the photon will not be absorbed because a photon that corresponds to 2 electron volt will have a lower energy than 2.2 electron volt. So, it will not be absorbed by 2.2 electron volt it will come out very nicely. So, that is a solution we shall discuss all this when we discuss the chapter of LED later on. But please be advised that you know PN junction can behave like an LED and it is operated at the forward bias which means that uh, you have a you, your turn on voltage is very important. So, your 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 PN junction is operated in this regime this regime ok in the it is called the first quadrant this is called the second quadrant this is called the third quadrant and this is called the fourth quadrant of a PN junction IV. So, P LED is operated in the first first quadrant here because and in, in, in this regime in this regime you will not get any light because the current is very low you will get light here you know here. So, you want to operate on the LED to operate here. So, for example, that if the turn on voltage is 2 volt you want to operate it may be at 2.2 or 2.3 volt slightly above the operation uh, the turn on voltage. So, that you will get some current say you will get 20 milliamp of current. So, you want that current to actually flow electrons will go to the P side holes will come to the N side. So, that current is flowing here and is giving some light. So, it will emit and it will be some brightness ok. So, that is how LED is operated in the forward bias junction ok. The same concept of a PN junction this is the same PM concept of a PN junction. See the PN junction everything you know the most important things happen in the depletion region only. I told you the electrons and holes have to recombine here. If they recombine here they cannot I mean they are actually crossing over this point no the electrons are going here and holes are going here. So, they are recombining here they will not recombine here I mean they will all diffuse and they will get absorbed here they, they, the recombination is only important in the depletion region ok. The recombination is important only in the depletion region here you will emit light ok. Now, the same structure can be used also as a photo detector what happens in a photo detector a photo detector basically detects light. So, you are shining a light of a particular wavelength on a sample ok and you expect that there should be current you are shining the light of a particular is the reverse of LED. So, you are shining a light of a particular wavelength and you expect the output to be electricity or output to be a very small current. So, essentially by shining light you are getting current. So, it is a sense it is a sensor it is like a photo sensor that is called photo detector ok. So, in a semiconductor based photo sensor photo detector what you happen is that you know if I look at the same structure again here is the same thing actually. So, if you have the Fermi level and then you have this P n junction here uh, you are shining light suppose in this region the depletion region there is a field here you know that there is a field here because the I have been telling it you many times that there is a slope in the conduction band. So, it means there is a field here the slope in the valence band is a field here if you shine light in this region that photons that are absorbed will be able to excite electron from the valence band to the conduction band leaving behind a hole here right. So, the, the one photon will basically release one electron hole pair. So, if you have a large number of photons you will also generate a large number of electron hole pair ok large number of electron hole pair will be generated. So, it depends on the intensity of the light if you have a very high intensity of course, you will have many photons that are bombarding this here and then each photon will basically excite if it is 100 percent efficient it will excite one electron hole pair. So, one electron hole pair will be created. So, what will happen is that because there is already an inbuilt field here the electron will be quickly swept away to this side and the hole will be quickly swept away to this side because the field will assist in that movement and because of that there will be current here the electrons will come out here the holes will come out here electrons going this side means the current is flowing this side because of electron holes going this side means the current is flowing this side in the electron in the device. So, it is effectively all the current is actually because of hole in electron when light is shining will actually go to the left side here ok and this is the reverse 
direction of the ideal diode current in a forward bias equation this is actually the direction of the current when the device is reverse biased is the same direction if you recall on the negative side right. So, essentially in a PN junction you do not even have to bias the device if you just keep it like this and you shine light of any wavelength uh, or not any wavelength the wavelength has to correspond to the band gap of the material then you are going to get some light a current out ok and that current is the photo current I call it I photo ok. Uh, at 0 bias you will not get any you know uh, any current otherwise, but here if you shine light you might get some current it is called the photo current at 0 bias, but typically photo detectors are operated in the third quadrant which is uh, if you recall again the IV here you know if I recall this is the PN junction IV. So, that is why I am saying PN junction IVs are so important because many of the devices can be analyzed here this is your forward bias this is your reverse bias. So, this is the first quadrant where LED is operated second quadrant nothing happens there is no characteristics this is the third quadrant where photo detectors are operated ok photo detectors are operated essentially although you can you do not have to apply any voltage, but you people typically apply very small voltage like say minus 5 volt or minus 2 volt and then you basically shine light. So, even if you do not apply any voltage this is 0 volt right when you shine light what will happen is that um, when you shine light what will happen is that this curve will shift like this this extra current that is coming here no this is called photo current this comes because of optical generation of carrier this comes because of optical generation of carriers in the depletion region right. So, I keep telling you so in this depletion region your shining light your electrons will come this side holes that are produced it will produce electron hole pairs electron will come this side holes will come that side there is a electricity there is a small current even at 0 bias this is at 0 bias this point is 0 bias and still there you will get some current this current value is called the photo current ok this is the photo current that you are getting and you but you slightly bias it negative. So, of course, you operate in the third quadrant here. So, essentially you are going to get uh, this is the current that is at minus 5 volt you are getting this is I photon photo current and this is the current that you are getting without shining light at minus 5 volt for example, this is minus 5 volt that is called dark current ok that is called dark current and the dark current is basically the, the current of the uh, diode when you are not shining any light. So, at minus 5 volt typically you will have very less current no because that is a diode reverse saturation current plus the generation current when you shine light you have a lot of optical generation of carriers that are swept away by the field. So, the current increases right. So, that is why this is called dark current this is the photo current you want this ratio of the photo current to dark current to be very large right. Um, so, that there is a lot of you know light there is a lot of sensitivity to the light if it is not large that means it is not a very sensitive detector right. So, essentially a PN junction can behave as a detector that is what it means right and of course, the light that you are shining you know it has to be absorbed for it has to be for it to be absorbed the band gap of the semiconductor has to be the same as the energy of the photon. So, for example, you know even a silicon can be a detector for example, if I am using a silicon photo detector and silicon's band gap is 1.1 eV if I am shining a light whose photons you know whose, whose photons are say 2 micron then 2 micron actually or 2000 nanometer that is the wavelength of the photon if you look at the energy the energy of the photon will be very less it might be 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 maybe eV electron volt which is less than the silicon band gap. So, they will pass through it they will not get absorbed. So, to get absorbed you need to shine a light whose band whose photon wavelength is such that the energy of the photon is equal to or more than the band gap of the semiconductor ok. So, it depends on the semiconductor that you are trying to see for example, if you want to detect an ultraviolet light of say 300 nanometer which is an ultraviolet light you need to have a band gap of the material as 1 2 4 2 I have given you this formula 300 roughly 4.14 eV basically right. So, you need a material of band gap around 4.14 eV to essentially absorb a light of 300 nanometer. So, photo detectors are typically operated at slight reverse bias although they can operate at 0 bias if they operate at 0 bias it is called self powered it is called self powered photo detector because you are not applying any voltage it is a self powered photo detector, but it is a PN junction eventually right. Now, actual photo detectors will have more uh, design rules and more of the sophistications coming with it, but essentially a PN junction can be a photo detector. So, that is very important to know similarly <coughs> A, photo a, a PN junction can also behave like a solar cell. Now, you know all over the world solar energy is becoming very cheap and solar energy and solar cells are becoming you know the, the latest trend I mean everywhere the government is trying to have solar cell you know how a solar cell works a solar cell actually also is sort of a PN junction only although there could be more you know design variations like it could be P plus N junction or N plus P junction those are there to increase the efficiency and other things, but typically it is a solar cell is a PN junction only. And remember and again I will talk about the IV characteristics of a uh, PN junction diode it is so important that every time it keeps coming here and here. So, this is your IV characteristics 
right and this is a first quadrant where led wide work again for led it has to be direct band gap material so silicon cannot be an led nothing happens in second quadrant in the third quadrant you, act, you use it as a photo detector pd of course you can use it at a zero voltage also and the solar cell is used at the fourth quadrant this is a solar cell quadrant okay in solar cell what happens is that when you shine light of course i told you your curve shifts like this so yet even at zero bias you have a finite current here which i call photo current in a photo detector but the same thing same thing exactly is called the short circuit current in a solar cell context it's called short circuit because the voltage is zero so if you are taking a solar cell if you are taking a solar cell essentially it's zero voltage so it is short both p and n side are short that is called short circuit current okay you're not applying any voltage but the moment you're shining light if you don't shine light and you connect a pn junction like this with a wire you are not going to get any current it will be giving you zero current because there is no voltage nothing and it's a it's it's, it's there's no there, there's no bias that you're applying right the moment you shine light here the moment you shine light here same thing will happen you know if you recall the if you recall the diagram here you know electron hole pairs will be generated if you shine light if you shine light this electron of course it has to be absorbed so the band gap of the material has to be such that you know it is absorbed and then it will be electron will drift this side holes will drift this side and that will give you a current even at zero voltage that is what happening here. So, even if you apply do not apply any voltage once you shine light electrons and holes will travel and there will be net current that is flowing and that current is called the short circuit current here that is the current you are getting here and remember a solar cell you, you know you cannot have a battery or an external uh, power source in a, in, a, in a solar cell because a solar cell has to behave like a battery a solar cell has to give electricity to the remote areas to anybody you know you cannot expect if you distribute solar cells among among in the remote areas you cannot ask the people to also get a battery and then apply voltage to the solar cell that is not that is meaningless right the solar cell has itself has to be like a power source it has to behave like a battery only. So, when you shine light it generates electricity without any voltage uh, without any requirement of any voltage or anything and it gives you this current right that is your short circuit current here ok. Uh, now, you might ask that it is almost the same thing as a photo detector that is true, but we do not go into the reverse bias we just keep it with without any bias, but you know you want to deliver power to something. So, for example, if you have a solar cell like this you want it to deliver power somewhere right. So, you know it is solar cell like this then you want to deliver power to some load I am putting as a load resistor this could be your electric fan this could be a TV or you know a bulb or whatever this is the load to which you are delivering the power. The moment you deliver power to the load I mean there is electricity that is going to the load this will be self biased automatically. So, it will basically come in this this side of the x axis or y axis. So, it will be self biased and then because it is here so it will be self biased somewhere here. So, basically you are going to get this much current in the real operation ok this is the real current this is the real voltage it is self biased and this area ok will be and divided by this whole area of this this red curve here ok is sort of the something called the fill factor we will not discuss it right now, but this is very important because that corresponds to the efficiency of the solar cell ok how efficient the solar cell is right. But anyways the essential idea is that a solar cell is also actually basically a pn junction only ok it is a pn junction only there can be variations like the p side doping can be high n side doping can be less and so on p plus n the many things are there but essentially a solar cell could be a pn junction only ok. And uh, one important thing is here of course is that in a solar cell in a, in a photo detector you know in a photo detector you can detect you can choose to detect any light a photo detector one important thing is that you might want to have a photo detector that detects only say infrared or that detects say red or that detects say ultraviolet so and so forth. So, the band gap of the photo detector can be made such that it will only correspond to IR or it will only correspond to UV only correspond to red and so on because the input the input light whether it is UV or IR or near blue or blue whatever that depends you know it can change, but in a solar cell it cannot change in solar cell the input spectra is fixed why the input spectra is fixed because the sunlight is the input spectra and the sunlight has a particular wavelength distribution and that is corresponding to the black body radiation of the sun and that is not going to change. So, no matter what material you take you cannot change the input spectra and so your material choice has to be dictated by this input spectra. So, the if you plot the energy of the sun you know per unit area for example and over wavelength it is lambda then it will have something like this you know it is a black body basically it peaks at around I think 500 nanometer or 550 nanometer cuts off around 360 nanometer or so there is no very little light below matlab 360. So, in UV there is nothing light most of the light is invisible and then here I think it is like 1 or 1.5 micron and so on less light is there in IR. So, most of the light is here invisible and near IR near IR of course. So, you want the solar cell such that this spectra is absorbed to the maximum essentially ok that is what you want. So, those are the things we will discuss when you come to solar cell 
photo detector LED chapters we will discuss that in the course. Here we are not concerned with the we just wanted to show that a simple p n junction a simple p n junction can behave as an LED can behave as a photo detector can behave as a solar cell okay? and they operate in this is in the first quadrant this is in the third quadrant this is in the fourth quadrant of the of the p n junction. So, a p n junction is a very powerful concept and just because we do not forget everything that we are studying till now a p n junction definitely has an ideal diode equation an ideal diode current okay? an ideal diode current which goes as j naught e to the power q v a by k t that is what we had studied is the reverse saturation current this is the voltage you are applying, but it also has a generation recombination current. Okay, the generation recombination current arises because of trap assisted recombination and other things in the depletion region. Uh, it goes as q by you know n i by 2 tau uh, into w the width this is the generation current and recombination current will this by this 2 k t minus. Okay. So, this is your generation recombination current that is ideal diode current both have to be added together and you know there is a drift diffusion component that is happening that is why we could not get this current we had solved the equation. Now most of the things of p n junction have now been covered. So, what remains now in p n junction before we go to uh, more uh, you know, further topics is that a p n junction um, can break down there is something called breakdown I have been referring to it every now and then that you know if you have a p n junction for example, if you have a p n junction here and then in a forward bias the current rises in the reverse bias the current is very low and eventually it breaks down I say. So, what is this breakdown it is happening at some breakdown voltage here right V b r I call it. So, some breakdown happens here uh, and breakdown what is this breakdown and when does it happen. So, that is an important thing that we need to understand okay? that is one thing that is remaining and the second thing that is remaining is capacitance voltage profiling. Okay? Capacitance voltage profiling so a p n junction is like a capacitor also actually it is like a capacitor only. Okay. So, from that capacitor beha behavior of the p n junction a lot of information about the doping and other things can be extracted. So, capacitance voltage is a powerful tool to measure you know the properties of a p n junction and breakdown is a process or a phenomena uh, where a device or diode breaks down. So, what happens at breakdown why does breakdown happen all these things some are something that we should be aware of because real devices like you know photo detectors or other things they can actually break down. Okay. And sometimes you take advantage of the breakdown you want to operate a photo detector near the breakdown point and in that case it is called avalanche photo detector for example, okay. avalanche photo detector. So, people can try to take advantage of the breakdown also, but breakdown in general is not a good thing because breakdown means that your device is now essentially not going to work beyond the breakdown, okay. beyond the breakdown point your device is not going to work. So, that is what it means. Okay. So, what does actually breakdown mean? Okay. So, what does actually breakdown mean? A breakdown happens typically in reverse bias. So, when you apply a large reverse bias, when you apply a large reverse bias, suddenly there can be a spike of current, you know, a sudden rise or abrupt rise of current. And abrupt rise of current can be there, and it typically would not be destructive, which means the device can still be operated later on unless you allow a lot of current to flow. So, what happens is that if you increase, I am only plotting the reverse voltage here. On a negative side, if you keep increasing the current in a voltage the current slowly keeps increasing 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 at one point the current will start to rise sharply. If you do not limit the current a large current will flow and that large current will burn the device or destroy the device also the voltage is large here. So, a lot of power will be dissipated and the device will be destructively broken down, but if you want to set a compliance so that you, you do not let the current increase you know that the current is spiking increasing here, but you clip the current. So, do not let the current increase you know that this is your breakdown that is happening now. Uh, if this is the case you can again come back and operate the device in this regime that is not a problem the device has not burned because the current is low. Okay? But if you do not let it if you just go it like that and the device will current is very high and the device is burned forever. So, typically people measure the breakdown by keeping the limit low so that you know you will see that it is breaking down, but the current is not high and so you can work the device around again. So, when breakdown happens suddenly a large number of current increases at a very small area here range here the current that has and suddenly it has increased in the reverse bias not in forward bias. Why because in reverse bias when you are increasing the current from here to here suppose the breakdown voltage is 20 volt minus 20 volt. So, over 20 volt the current is very low. So, current is very low matlab the film is depleted the depletion region is very good. So, 20 volt essentially is dropped across the depletion region right is dropped across the depletion region or in other words you can say the depletion region of the p n junction is blocking 20 volt. So, the entire field is existing there right all the field is dropping across Okay, all the potential is dropping there. So, all the field is dropping across the depletion region. So, all the field is dropping across, across the depletion region that is why eventually it will break down here on the forward bias side it will not break down because there is no voltage blocking the current is increasing very fast. So, there is nothing like dr dropping the field okay, or blocking the voltage there is nothing like that. 
in forward bias because the current is very high think of it like a say metal not exactly metal but in a metal you cannot drop field you cannot block voltage right so in the forward bias when the current is high you are not going to drop any you are not going to have blocking the you cannot block the voltage you cannot drop a field right so only in the reverse bias the current is very low you are going to block a voltage and drop a field so that's why breakdown happens in reverse bias now there are two main ways in which breakdown can happen okay there are two main ways in which breakdown can happen uh, one of the ways in which breakdown is happen can is called tunneling that i'll come to that and in if this is the case it's called a zener breakdown and you know the correct associated diode we call zener diode you might have heard about it and the second is actually avalanche it's called avalanche breakdown and this is a very important breakdown many of the or most of the practical devices are limited by avalanche breakdown only okay they are limited by avalanche breakdown only so uh, let's wrap up the class here today so we'll end the class so what did we learn today we had learned about uh, the, the the in the context of pn junction how it can be used as a solar cell led photodetector that we had touched the very basics many things are remain there we'll discuss that in a later in the course when we come to these optical devices i also told you that you know now a pn junction has two important things that are remaining to be covered one is breakdown one is capacitance profiling uh, we are starting with breakdown i told you breakdown is you know it occurs when you have a large reverse bias so suddenly the reverse leakage current which is very low suddenly increases and if you let it increase then it will burn the device but if you clip that you put a compliance sort of thing then it will not burn the device you can still use the device again but you know where the breakdown occurs it is a very ra rapid rise of current okay and breakdown occurs in the reverse bias only because until breakdown happens say 20 volt or 30 volt is the breakdown until that volt is reached your actually reverse current is very low which means the depletion region is really depleted it's blocking the voltage the field is dropping there in a forward bias current is very high when very high current flows like in a metal you cannot block a voltage you cannot drop a field okay so bre breakdown happens only in reverse bias there are two main mechanisms of breakdown one is tunneling based breakdown it's called zener breakdown associated zener diodes you might have heard about it and other breakdown is called avalanche breakdown and that is a very common breakdown and most of the devices you know are limited by avalanche breakdown okay so in the next class we will discuss what this zener breakdown and avalanche breakdown mean and what you know uh, how, how do you understand what is which breakdown and so on okay so that we will discuss in the next class so thank you for your come for your time today